Okay, let's explain a little bit what's going on. As you can imagine, a programming language has a bunch of uh, code words, or as they're called, keywords. These are the main commands which you can type and the compiler will recognize this word and the compiler will know what to do when the program is run when the program is running in my compiler many of these special command words these keywords are recognized by my compiler program and they are automatically colored in blue you see using is a special keyword namespace is a keyword int is a keyword return is a keyword include all this stuff in blue are the keywords which are the foundation, the main basic words, uh, which are the commands of this programming language in C++. So we are going to try and learn all of these uh, basic keywords as we go along. The fun thing about C++ actually is that you can figure out ways to invent your own command keywords. It's very interesting. You use a whole bunch of tricks like we're going to learn and basically compose your own command words, your own keywords, which could do cool stuff for you. Just to give you an idea, let's say that uh, I'm in my program I need to have the using thing and the namespace and uh, the int and the return and a whole bunch of interesting keywords. And let's say that I'm, I'm tired of typing all of these keywords myself, one after the other, every day. Uh, I would like to invent my own keyword, which would um, do all this stuff automatically. So there is a way in C++ to do that stuff. Let's say I want to call it shortcut. This, this isn't exactly how we do it, this is just, you know, um, example code, just to illustrate what I'm trying to tell you. And um, now, there are ways in C++ to do this trick that when I'm going to type in shortcut the compiler will know that what I really want is to do this and that and the other and that. So I just invented my own keyword called shortcut which does all of this cool stuff. And this brings us to um, all the way at the top over here. What does this mean? Include stdafx.h and include IO stream. If you haven't forgotten, we are currently working in a .cpp file. Any file that finishes with the extension .cpp and even .c is recognized by my compiler as a source file. As you see over here, he puts it in the category of source files. Source files are actually the only files which the compiler will take and compile together to make our program. Pretty much no other file will be uh, compiled if it doesn't finish with .cpp. And there are other types of files which we will need in our program. For example, header files. A header file usually finishes with the extension .h or sometimes .hpp or sometimes even it doesn't have any extension like it doesn't have dot anything in the end but as I said if it doesn't finish with dot cpp the compiler will not recognize it as a source file and it will not compile it the compiler only compiles source file so this is what the pound include command does pound include tells the compiler wait don't go any further yet please go ahead and open up this file which is in the quotes or which is in the triangular brackets open up that file and read through all the stuff that's there and compile all of that stuff first. And then continue on with whatever is in this .cvp file. So over here, the compiler will open up stdafx.h. This is it, the header stdafx. And it will do whatever it says over here. We're not going to go into anything over here yet. It's just going through that file and compiling all the stuff that's there which otherwise it would not do if we wouldn't include that header file. Then as we, move, as we move on, the compiler will include this other file called iostream. 
Let's try to open up this file. This is it, the file IO stream. This one has a whole bunch of code over here. We're really not going to go into any of this yet. Um, so the compiler goes through these header files, which again, otherwise it would not compile. And it does compile everything that, that's in there because we included it. And then once it's done, it continues with compiling our code over here. So where is this IO stream file? As we're going to learn a little bit later, IO stream is a file which should normally come with any compiler and it should already be located somewhere where the compiler will, the compiler will know exactly where it is and it will know where that file is and it'll compile it. That's what these triangular brackets mean. It means it's in these places where the compiler usually should know already where it is because it's already set in the compiler settings, as we're going to see another time. Uh, if we're using quotes, it means it is a local file which is in our project. As we see, this file stdafx is in our project over here, so it isn't somewhere where the compiler knows already where it is, it's somewhere local, so we use the quotes. Okay, so we've included two headers, stdafx and iostream. These two headers have in them a whole bunch of interesting stuff which other compi other programmers have already typed up a while ago and we will now take advantage of that and use the stuff that they already made to um, get ourselves going as you remember I said before you can invent your own keywords in C++ to do your own cool stuff using the basic keywords so that's what these other files have. They have a whole bunch of uh, composed, made uh, keywords which other programmers already made. And we're going to use that. Okay, so let's move on. Over here we're telling the compiler that we will be using a package in this file which is called std. We're going to learn later what does it mean, a package, namespace. Basically, in this file, there is something called a package, a, a namespace, and we would like to use stuff that's in that package. That package is called std. Then we move on. Let's see what this means over here. int main opening and closing parentheses. Back in the olden days, the way a program would work was basically you would type up um, instructions in a, in, a, in a very orderly fashion. It would sometimes look something like this. Uh, instruction number one, blah blah blah. Instruction number two, blah blah blah. Three, blah blah blah, etc. etc. Maybe even sometimes you would have instruction number four, jump to instruction number 16. And then we would have a whole bunch of commands, and then instruction number 16, do something. Instruction 17, return, go back to where you came from, which is instruction number four. So this would be uh, the way how the program's code, the program's uh, instructions would be organized with uh, line numbers so that when the program is run the interpreter or basically the compiler would know in which order the commands must be executed. However this is a little bit messy and uh, not so easy to keep track of. It's a little bit of a mess to have one big list of commands and you have to keep track of what's jumping to where and what's returning to where and stuff like that. It was getting pretty complicated. So instead C++ has something which is called functions. A function is basically uh, one chunk of instructions all bunched together in one package which begins with a opening brace and a closing brace. This is called a function. A function has a name, the fun this function's name is called main, and here's the opening brace and the closing brace. And here we have all of our stuff which is going to happen in this function. We're going to learn more about functions a little later on. Now every C++ program must have at least one main function, which is where the program starts. And here it is, the main function. And inside the main function is where our program begins.